Hello, and welcome to the Encouraging Word of today. Today is Monday, December the 13th, and we're going to pick up here in the wonderful Encouraging Word of God, and it does have an encouraging thought for us to hold on to in the midst of what we're, what we're living in right now in our world. Uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ was born, uh, it was a very dark time in, in the world's history. It was, uh, there was so much evil, so much um, wickedness that, that prevailed in that day. And we're going to see an instance of that. Now, we are living in some wicked and trying and difficult times. There's more dissension, more division, more hate uh, in our world today uh, than, than ever has been. There's more uh, classes of divisions of life that are, are split uh, politically, religiously, racially, culturally, socially, economically. I mean, we got a lot of things that are just, I mean, just... As the Bible says, I believe, the whole world groaneth in creation, uh, looking uh, to the appearing of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of creation is groaning. I mean, there's a, there, the whole world is in turmoil right now. But it was in turmoil in the days in which Christ came too. And the Bible says about that, uh, about this birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, that those who sat in great darkness have seen a great light. And Jesus Christ the light of the world was born into a very dark time. And you say, well, how dark was that time? Well, we're going to pick up in chapter 2 and verse 13. And notice what it says here. Now, remember that Jesus has been born. Herod's found out. The Magi uh, have come to, to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And they've come to Herod. And they said, where is uh, this one who's born king of the Jews? And Herod's ears perked up and said, there ain't but one king. I'm the king. And if anybody threatens that throne, I will have them killed. And so we know that that's what's going to take place. And so Herod says, you go find him and then you bring back words to me. You tell me where it is so I can come and worship him. It wasn't coming. To, he, he was not coming to worship Jesus. He was coming to kill him. And so, uh, but God always protects his people, even in the most wicked and darkest times. He always protects his people. Sometimes he protects them by bringing them into glory. And sometimes he protects them supernaturally here upon the earth. But here, listen to what the word says here today. And so verse 13, and when they departed, that is, the wise men, as they departed and went on into their own country, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream and saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And so it's very clear that Herod was so threatened by this baby being born who, uh, who was prophesied to become a king that he was willing to kill him right then and there. Just because he threatened his throne some many years down the road. I mean, he was willing to take and kill the Lord of glory. Uh, that's how wicked uh, this king was. That's how wicked the world in which we were born into. But it didn't just stop there. As we continue on with this story, listen to what happens. And he says, And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And he was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the Lord, saying, uh, out of Egypt, I have called my son. So God supernaturally sent a messenger to send Joseph and Mary and the little baby Jesus, the young boy Jesus, uh, into Egypt to hide them, to protect them from Herod. And so, but listen to what happens when the wise men don't come back and tell Herod where this baby boy is and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 16, then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, when they didn't come back and tell him where he was, he was exceedingly wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in the Bethlehem and all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently required, inquired of the wise men. And so the wise men came and told him that I guess in two years uh, back is when they saw the star and knew that was a star. And they traveled from the east and came to, to Bethlehem to worship the Lord of glory, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews. And so Herod says, well, if I don't know who he is, but I know that there's a two-year span. So he may be two years old or he may be younger. They may have seen the star and he's just not been born, but he may have been born on the day they saw the star. And so we're going to start at two years old. Now, we believe it is two years old here in the story because at the at the first, we find him uh, as a baby wrapped in swaddled clothes, lying in a manger, in a stable, uh, in, in a place where they keep the barn animals. Uh, but here we find him in the house with his mother. 
and he's no longer a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. He's a young child now. And so we believe he's two years old. So Herod says, I'm going to just make sure I get him. I'm going to kill every child, every child two years old and under in all of Bethlehem. Now, could you imagine? Could you imagine that? I mean, listen, we're living in some dark days, but we're not living in days like that yet. Now, when it comes to an issue, there is a genocide of babies in our culture. We, we are doing this because it inconveniences our lives. It threatens our lifestyle. It threatens our rule. It threatens our lives. And we're doing that with the issue of abortion. People are committing the sin of abortion because it threatens their lifestyle. It don't threaten their, their kingship, but it threatens their lifestyle. Well, in one way, it does threaten their kingship because they no longer can be in control. They've got now this, this baby is going to hinder them. I'm not ready to have a baby, but... You can lay down and have what causes that baby, and that's called fornication. And if you're not ready to have a baby, you shouldn't be able, you shouldn't lie down in a bed. Uh, we shouldn't be teaching safe sex. We should be teaching abstinence. There is no such thing as safe sex except for abstinence, doing what God told us to do, being who God told us to be. And he says fornication is a sin. And so uh, we shouldn't be killing babies just because we want to go out and have, live our lives the way we want to live it. That's the same thing that Herod was doing here. But it ain't, even though we're doing it in a different way, it's still not, uh, no one would be able to say, go into America and kill every boy and girl two years old and under. I mean, that's a wicked deal. And the Bible says these words, the reason that it, that was done was that it would, would be fulfilled, which was spoken of by Jeremiah the prophet saying, in Ramah, there was a voice heard, a lamentation and a weeping and a great mourning, Rachel weeping for our children and would not be comforted because they are not. And so this would have been a horrible thing. Every child two years old and under murdered, killed just because it threatened the lifestyle. And you say, how wicked? Well, it is wicked. And that's definitely darker than what we're living in today. But we are wicked in the sin of abortion as well. We kill because it inconveniences our lifestyle. But as I said before, those who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Jesus Christ, the one who was born into this kind of environment, still walks and talks and lives with us today. And so while we may be living in some dark days, we can say with absolute confidence and assurity that we have the light of glory and he is with us in the midst of even our darkest days as well. And so I pray today you go forth mighty in the name of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I pray that you are encouraged in your Lord and Savior, the light of hope.